Welcome back, kindergartners and first graders. I am so happy to see you today, ready to read and ready to visualize. Remember, all week we'll be working on making meaning lessons here together. And I wanted to say that your teachers really, really miss you, and they are so proud of you for working here together today. My name is Miss Brandt, and I'm a kindergarten teacher right here in Seattle at Rising Star Elementary School. Go Firebirds! So I'm very excited today to share with you a new story and to help us all practice our visualizing and our good reading strategies. Before we get started, today you just need one thing. You're gonna need a tone and talk partner. And I heard so many good suggestions from some students about who their turn and talk partners were and could be last time we worked together. But I'll just remind you in case you forget. So if you need a turn and talk partner, you can use a grown up, a mom, dad, grandma, or grandpa who's at home with you, a kid like a brother or a sister who's at home with you. If there's nobody there with you to turn and talk to, you could also use a stuffed animal, an imaginary friend, you could even pick up your phone like this and give me a call and tell me what you think and I will be your turn and talk partner. So before we get started today, I want to introduce you to two of my very favorite special friend turn and talk partners, Taggy the Tiger and Saki the Sock. Oh my goodness, I see so many of you waving hi to them. Can you guys wave? They are so happy to be back today, even shy Saki. And when I turn and talk, I can turn and talk to them and hear from some of you too. All right, readers, let's get started. So today we're reading a new book, but before we start reading, I want us to remember some very important things that good readers, like all of you, always do when they read. So we're actually gonna go over here to our easel chart, and we're gonna look at some things. I made this to help us remember what good readers do. Wow, yeah, I see so many of you making connections or showing me. They remember this chart from class. So many first graders have made this chart with their teachers already. You're gonna be experts and help us out, especially in kindergarten, so we can learn a little bit more about what really good readers do. The first thing is good readers make connections to their lives. And I know that my kindergartners always show connections just like this. Can you try that with me? Yeah, you got it. A connection. We can make connections to our lives. Sometimes a book or a poem reminds us of our own life and we can make a connection. Good readers also make connections between stories. Now, some of you were here last week and you might remember that we read the story Gregory the Terrible Eater. That story was about an animal named a goat but called a goat, and some of you might be making a connection and remembering a book you read that was also about an animal or maybe even a goat. We can make connections between stories, connections between stories that remind us of each other. Good readers also retell stories in their own words, and they use words like first, then, next, and finally. Good readers always retell in their own words. Also, good readers always, you can say it with me, visualize. Good readers always visualize so that they can make a mental picture of what's happening in their story. So I'm gonna need your help today to help me be a really good reader and so we together can make connections to ourselves, to stories, to other stories, to retell our story in our own words, and to practice visualizing. All right, readers, I think we're ready. Give me a thumbs up if you are. Perfect, okay. So before we read our book today, I'm gonna tell you what it's called. Are you ready? This book is called Sunflower House, and it's by Eve Bunting. Eve Bunting drew the pictures and wrote the words. Before we read, I wanna show you a picture of some amazing sunflowers. So go ahead and take a look here. <gasps> wow. What are you noticing? I'm noticing that in one of these pictures, there are giant, tall, 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 tall sunflowers. And there's a person standing there. Those are sunflowers behind them. Sunflowers can grow very tall. 
I also see that there are some kids playing in a field full of sunflowers. That's right, sunflowers grow big and tall and they grow for a long way, sometimes if you plant them like that. All right, go like this if you have seen a sunflower before. Wow, in those photos, we saw some really tall sunflowers and a field full of sunflowers with children in them. So now, I want you to go ahead and close your eyes. And you can point to your brain if it helps you when you're working on your visualizing. I want you to picture some grass filled with sunflowers. What would that look like? So think for a moment. Go ahead and give me a call when you're ready. You can say, it would look like, or I picture. Wow, readers, thank you for giving me a call. I heard so many great pictures that kids made in their minds when they thought about a field full of sunflowers. One kindergartner told me that she pictured so many sunflowers that you can't even walk. Another student told me that they pictured not that many sunflowers, but they were all in a nice line so you could walk by and look at them. You can give me a connection if you agree with either of those students. And I heard a lot of other great ideas as well. I have one more question before we start reading. So what do you think it would feel like to walk in between giant sunflowers that are taller than you? What would that feel like? Remember when we talk about how it would feel, you could even put your hand on your heart. So go ahead and think. And you could say, it would feel like. Okay, turn and talk. All right, readers, Shy Saki the Sock just told me that she thinks it would feel good because you would have lots of sunflowers swaying back and forth and it would feel almost comforting or good. Thanks, Saki. Another student called me and told me that he thought it would feel a little bit silly, like you were walking with a bunch of really tall grown-ups, except they were flowers. And another student called me and said that she thought it might be even a little scary because they're so tall. Great job visualizing sunflowers, kindergartners and first graders. So now, if you still have your eyes closed or you're still thinking, go ahead and open them up. I wanna show you a couple of things. This story is called Sunflower House and it's by Eve Bunting. So take a quick look everybody here at the cover. I see a child who is pulling down some giant sunflowers. Now, we're gonna do something called a picture walk, where we look at just a couple of pictures. If you feel like you're ready for a challenge and you don't wanna look at the pictures, go ahead and turn around or even cover your eyes so you can't see and you're ready to visualize. If you feel like maybe I want a little idea before I start visualizing, you can take a look now. <gasps> wow, look at this. I see tons of sunflowers, and I see the same kid and a dog. Let's skip ahead a little bit here. Whoa, I see lots of kids standing by some sunflowers, but they don't really look yellow anymore. They look like they're falling over. Let's take one more look. Let's look at the end. <gasps> Here at the very end, I don't really see any sunflowers. I wonder where they went and what could be happening. So let's go ahead and make a quick prediction based on those pictures. And if you had your eyes closed, you can open them up now and you can share too. What do you predict will happen in this book, Sunflower House? So go ahead and think and you're gonna say, I predict or I think Give me a call. Tell me what you think will happen. Okay. 
wow, I heard some great predictions. I heard one student say that they predict this child will plant lots of sunflowers, but in the end, they will all be gone. Go like this if you agree with that student. And remember, it's okay if you predict something else. All right, students, we're gonna read Sunflower House, but this time I will not show you any pictures. You're gonna have to visualize and use your brain to make pictures in your mind. I'll stop four times while we read to ask some questions, and I'll also make sure I tell you any words and what they mean that we don't know yet. All right, let's read to find out what happens in this story. Sunflower House by Eve Bunting. First, I pull out all the weeds. Then I sow my sunflower seeds. Sow means plant. When you plant something, you put it in the ground so it can grow. Ooh, I see some students showing me how to plant. Some of you are doing that right now. Then I sow my sunflower seeds. It says to set them in a line, but dad says round and round is fine. I give them water every day and shoo the pesky birds away. Shoo means to scare away by moving your arms. Show me shooing. You got it. Go eat the berries on the tree. These sunflower seeds belong to me. The package says they're guaranteed. Guaranteed means promised or it will happen. The package says they're guaranteed. A mammoth flower grows from each seed. Mammoth means very big or giant. A mammoth flower grows from each seed. My friend Bernice says, there's no way. You don't know everything, I say. Wait. Ooh, I see so many readers pointing to their brains to visualize here. Keep it up. The stems poke up, all ringed around. Stems are the part of a plant that come out of the ground when it starts to grow. The stems poke up all ringed and round, a pale green circle in the ground. Pale means light. A pale green circle in the ground. They're growing tall, they're growing fast. <gasps> wow. All right, readers, we're gonna pause for a moment. What did you picture when I read this? And what words helped you to do that? They're growing tall, they're growing fast. Go ahead and think. And when you're ready, turn and talk to your partner. What did you picture here? You can say, I pictured. Me too, Taggy. Taggy said, I pictured sunflowers shooting up out of the ground so, so quickly until they were very, very tall. I also noticed and heard some kindergartners and first graders say that the words growing tall, growing fast, helped them to visualize sunflowers going so quickly up towards the sky. Good job using the words to help you. That's what good readers do. And oh my gosh, sunflowers at last. All frilly yellow, bright and big. Mammoth is the word, all right. Their petals open wide and spread a golden roof above my head. My friends come rushing down to see the sunflower house hand grown by me. There's lots of room inside for three. Mom brings us cookies and iced tea. Ooh, I'm seeing some readers make connection signs. You might have snack at home like that too. But mom and dad can't fit at all. They're much too big and wide and tall. What did you see in your mind in this part of the story? What did you picture? Go ahead and think. And when you're ready, turn and tell your partner.
Wow, my phone was ringing so much. I heard so many students call me, and they, a lot of them told me that they pictured three kids inside many sunflowers. The words, there's lots of room inside for three, made them think there were three kids playing inside many sunflowers. All right, if you visualize something else, that's good too. Keep it up, here we go. All summer long, the house is ours. We play in it for hours and hours. It's a castle, it's a cage. We're jungle beasts that roar and rage. Beasts are animals. We're jungle beasts that roar and rage. Can you all show me a big roar? <sighs> Whoa, yeah, I heard that. My friends sleep out with me one night, bundled up and snuggled tight. Moon shadows shiver on the ground. The sunflowers whisper all around. They whisper songs of heat and rain and things too secret to explain. I see the stars play peekaboo. Peekaboo is a game. Sometimes grown-ups play it with babies. They hide their face and then show it like this. Peekaboo. I see the stars play peekaboo and wish a wish that can't come true. Wow, I'm noticing so many good readers visualizing here. Keep it up. One day, the leaves are tinged with brown. Tinged means a little bit colored brown. Tinged with brown, a flower comes tumbling, rumbling down. Next day, some more bend over, fall. And now it's not a house at all. What did you picture here when I read those words? And what words helped you? Go ahead and think for a moment. I see a lot of you already doing this, remembering to close your eyes or point to your brain to visualize and turn and tell a partner. What did you picture here? All right, readers, Saki told me that she pictured the big mammoth giant sunflowers falling down to the ground. And the words tumbling, rumbling down helped her picture that. Wow, I'm seeing so many of you show me connections. You agree with Saki. Let's keep reading to find out what happens. We tie it up with string and sticks but it's impossible to fix. It's gone, there's nothing we can do, not even with the glue all's glue. Wait! There's still the puffy middle part that's filled with seeds, enough to start. Another sunflower house next spring with walls, a roof, and everything. It's neat to think that when something's gone, a part of it goes on and on. It's such a super duper plan. We pick out all the seeds we can. Our pockets bulge. Bulge means to stick out, they're full. Our pockets bulge, the blue jays come, the sparrows, crows, they all take some. Blue jays, sparrows, and crows are all different kinds of birds. The blue jays come, the sparrows, crows, they all take some. We still have lots and lots to share. Now be aware, prepare, take care. Aware means pay attention and prepare means get ready or be ready. Let me read that again. And I'm gonna ask you, what did you picture here? Our pockets bulge, the blue jays come, the sparrows, crows, they all take some. We still have lots and lots to share. Now be aware, prepare, take care. All right, think, what did you picture here? What words helped you? Go ahead and think, and then give me a call or tell your partner, what did you picture here? I 
have one reader on the phone right now with me. And she's telling me that she pictures lots of birds coming to eat the sunflowers. Why do you picture that? Oh, thank you, bye. She said the words, Blue jays, sparrows, and crows helped her know there were lots of birds. Wow, good readers can retell what happened. They can use words to help them know what's going on and visualize. Excellent. Next summer, they'll be everywhere. And that's the end of our story, Sunflower House. So what are some of the things the children do in this sunflower house in the book? What are some of the things they do? Go ahead and think for a moment. Try to remember back, what do they do? And you can turn and tell your partner when you're ready. All right, Taggy, do you wanna tell them? Yeah? Taggy said, that he remembered the children ate snacks in the sunflower house and they slept outside in the sunflower house, bundled up tight because it was cold. Thanks, Tygy. All right, some of you said the same thing and I heard some other answers too, like the kids played like it was a castle or like it was the jungle. Excellent remembering what we read. Why do you think the children let the birds come to the sunflowers just now at the end. Why do you think the children did that? Those blue jays, sparrows, and crows came to take the seeds. Why did they do that? Think about it. Give me a call. Tell me what you think. Why? Yeah. All right. I heard some readers tell me they thought maybe the birds would take the sunflower seeds somewhere else. And then I heard some other people say, Maybe they thought the birds were hungry. And I even heard one kid say that he knows that birds like to move seeds around so that next spring there will be sunflowers everywhere. All right, one more question, readers. What are some of the pictures in your mind of that sunflower house? What does it look like in your mind? You can visualize here. Think about it for a moment. And then you'll turn and tell your partner I pictured or I visualized. All right, I just had a reader call me and tell me that they visualized so many sunflowers, it actually looked like a real castle that the kids were playing in. Wow, way to visualize or make a picture in your mind with those giant mammoth sunflowers. All right, students. So now we're gonna get started with two new words that we have to add to our vocabulary chart. And so there are two words that we just came across in our book. Let's look over here to remember. Let's say this together again, ready? One, two, three. Vocabulary, you got it. Vocabulary are new words that we're learning to help us be even better readers and thinkers. Last time, we learned the word cooperate, which means to work together. You can show me cooperate. Yeah, like kids building a blockhouse. Cooperate. We also learned the word beneath. <gasps> I see some kids showing. If you're gonna go beneath a chair, you crouch down because beneath means under. You got it. All right, let's read this together. Ready? Cooperate beneath. Excellent. Today, we're gonna to add two new words. The first word we're gonna add is from our book and it's the word mammoth. Can you all say mammoth with me? Mammoth, you got it. Mammoth means giant or really big, like those huge mammoth sunflowers we saw in the picture and read about in our book. So I'm gonna write the word mammoth up here, but first I want you to act like you are mammoth, like you're huge, show me huge mammoth. There you go. Yeah, mammoth means giant or very big. While I'm writing, I want you to think about something that you saw that was mammoth. And you're gonna tell your partner, say, I saw a mammoth, all right? 
You do that while I'm writing. Wow, I heard so many good sentences. I heard one reader say they saw a mammoth elephant. You bet, elephants are huge. I wrote mammoth on our vocabulary chart. And I'm gonna draw a giant or mammoth tree because some trees can be mammoth or giant. I'm gonna draw a little tiny person over here to show how mammoth the tree is. All right. Great work, readers. Everyone say mammoth with me again. Mammoth. Tell this guy, mammoth, mammoth. Excellent. All right. Our last word we're going to add today is the word aware. Can you say that with me? Aware. Aware means looking around. You know what's going on, and you're ready for anything. Like this. Show me aware. Act it out with me. You got it. All right. I'm gonna write the word aware onto our vocabulary chart, and I want you to tell your partner, I was aware when. You can even call me and tell me while I'm writing, all right? You can look at the screen for the sentence, I was aware when. Excellent. I heard a student say, I was aware when the door opened. I heard it open. Here, I'm going to draw a person whose eyes are wide open. They're very aware. They're looking around, and they know what's going on. And their ears are also going to be listening, because people who are aware are looking and listening. They know what's going on. Let's read aware together again. Ready? Aware. OK, whisper aware into your hand. Aware and then whisper it to your toes, aware. You got it, readers. Wow, so many new words, and I'm so proud of you for working so hard to learn those new vocabulary words. Now, it's about time for you to get started on your independent reading. Remember, readers who are reading on their own do all of those things that good readers do, and they're especially thinking about their reading or being self-monitors. I'm actually gonna go back over here and show you our chart that says, thinking about my reading. You got it. I'm seeing so many of you go like this. You remember that good readers think about their reading and that we talk about this every lesson together. So good readers are thinking, what is happening in my book? Good readers are thinking, do I understand what I am reading? And good readers are always thinking, can I read most of the words? If you can, it means it's a just right book for you. Let me show you the book that I'm going to read later today while you're reading also. I know Taigi and Saki are so excited because they love this book too. This book is called Jamaica and Brianna. It's by Juanita Havel and it's illustrated by Anne Sibley O'Brien. Now, yesterday, I was thinking before I read, maybe this book is about two girls who are going to be friends. I'm gonna read just a couple pages today and show you how I'm thinking about my reading. Jamaica and Brianna. Do I have to wear Aussie's boots? Jamaica asked her mother. Until I have a chance to buy you new boots, her mother said. Jamaica pulled on Aussie's old gray boots. I don't want to wear these boots. They're boy boots. I'm going to stop here and think, what is happening in my book? I can even go back and look at the picture. And I'm knowing that this girl does not want to wear Aussie's boots. This girl is Jamaica. She doesn't want to wear those boots. That's what's happening. Her father shook his head. They're unisex boots for boys or girls. But they're too tight. Her mother scrunched the toe of the boot. They fit fine for now, she said. I'm gonna stop here and think to myself, could I read most of those words? Yeah, I see lots of thumbs up. I could. And I understood what was happening in my book, that Jamaica did not want to wear Aussie's old boots. This is a just right book for me, and I'm gonna keep reading it when you all get started reading your just right books. 
So, give me a big air high five. Give me an air high five, uh, high 10. There you go, nice. You did such a good job visualizing with me today when we read Sunflower House and learning new vocabulary words and thinking about all the things that good readers do. All right, so you're gonna go ahead, find your Just Right book and get started reading. I'll see you next time. And remember, if you need a Just Right book, you can always check out our student portal online. All right, bye.